What's up folks, CrossSG back with an update on the new Abyss changes. So what we knew prior to this from the official sources was that the new Leyline Disorders were possibly going to change for floors 9 through 12. What we didn't know was whether there were going to be any changes to the floors themselves in terms of mob types and such. Well now that the reset is live, let's take a look at what actually changed. As you can see, Yes, I have already cleared all the four floors, I did some test runs to get a feel for it before this video. More on that in a bit, let's go over the changes first. First up, looking at the blessing and there are two parts to it. The first part is when a character obtains an elemental shard created from a crystallized reaction between Geo and Cryo, a shockwave will be released dealing damage to surrounding enemies. This sounds like one of the leyline disorders we commonly see in domains, except specific to the crystallized reaction and specifically between Geo and Cryo. For the second part, when a character obtains an elemental shard created from a crystallized reaction between Geo and Cryo, E-skill cooldown is decreased by one second. Now this looks like it could be pretty strong, but then again, it requires a Cryo-specific crystallized reaction, meaning we'd have to have a reliable Cryo application to benefit from this fully. It certainly looks like Mihoyo is dead set on pushing Geo and Cryo for this period, which isn't all that surprising, we kind of expected that already. Okay, taking a look at the Abyss Chambers themselves, everything looks to be as stated in the official pre-launch post. Floor 9 has the sheer cold effect in play and it spawns two braziers on the field that provide relief from it and enemies will constantly attack these braziers so we'll have to either defend them or burst the enemies down ASAP running to and from the braziers as needed to manage the sheer cold. Now floor 10 also has the sheer cold effect, but instead of braziers, it has sealies on the field, which move slowly clockwise around the field. So we basically need to follow the sealie around and fight around it to keep sheer cold at bay, or likewise burst down enemies before it hits the limit. So just a quick note on sheer cold, in the Abyss, Sheer Cold does seem to stack a little bit faster than it does in Dragon's Spine, so that's something to take note of. Okay, Floor 11 has the Engulfing Storm debuff, which constantly drains energy from your team. Now, this is an Electro debuff similar to the Cryo Stamina debuff on the previous version of Floor 12, so gaining elemental infusions such as Standing and Bennett's Alt will temporarily disable the debuff. Now this debuff can be extremely annoying, especially if you run burst heavy rotations like I do, because it can completely disrupt your rotation. Your burst could be up one second and down the next. Even hotkey swapping to use your team's burst can leave you stranded on a character that suddenly doesn't have enough energy to use his burst. That being said, it was more of an annoyance than an outright roadblock for me personally, and I eventually cleared the floor. You just need to be on point with your burst use. Floor 11 also increases cryo damage dealt by 75%. And lastly, we have Floor 12, and it just straight up increases geo damage by 75% with no other effects. Taking a quick look at the mob changes, and we see that there has indeed been a complete reshuffle through these floors. Floors 9 and 10 look to be largely filled with cryo-type enemies, with a few electro mages and treasure hoarders thrown into the mix. Nothing too specific here, if you have played through the Dragon Spine campaign, you should be familiar with most of these mob types by now. Floor 11 has a pretty mixed enemy pool, with Electro Slime, Treasure Hoarders and Hilly Churl in the first two chambers. Chamber 3 has Fatui Skirmishers in the first half and Fatui Pyro Agents and Electro Mages in the second half, so you have to plan your first team to ensure you have the necessary shield breaks. Now floor 12 is littered with rock shield hilly churls, so it'll be easier if you had geo units, claymore users or clee on your teams to help with shield breaks. The second half of chamber 1 has the eye of the storm, so you need to be sure that your second team is equipped to handle it. Otherwise the rest of floor 12 has a couple of electro mages, a couple of fatui pyro agents and treasure hoarders. Alright as mentioned earlier, I have already run through all the floors and 9 starred everything. Yes, my teams are very well geared, so it certainly helped, but the fact that I was able to do this within the first hour of the reset, essentially going into it completely cold, without any strategy, suggests that the current Abyss on a whole isn't quite as challenging as the previous one. Yes, running Geo units definitely helps on floor 12, but based on what I'm seeing, it isn't nearly as gated behind Geo units as the previous version was gated behind Pyro units. 
trying it without any Jill characters, I was able to 8 star floor 12 easily with two very unoptimized teams. Yeah, I actually had problems putting together two full teams without any Geo units because aside from Razor, every other non-Geo character that I have either shares gear with other units or is built specifically to support my Geo carries. That said, the point is I'm pretty confident that Geo units aren't required to clear or even 9 star floor 12 during this phase and if anything, I'd speculate that some might find floor 11 more challenging than floor 12. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video folks. I just wanted to give you an overview of the new Abyss and some of my thoughts on it. Overall, I'm relieved that it seems they didn't take the same heart-gated approach that they did with Pyro units in the previous phase of the Abyss. I am not a fan of gating content behind specific elements, especially in a gacha game. With that, I'll leave you with the gameplay of all the flaws and a few clips of different teams I tried on floor 12. I'll timestamp the clips too, of course, so you can skip to any clip that interests you. As always, thanks for watching, thumbs up if you liked it, down if you didn't, crush that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy New Year, folks.
good. Ugh! <sighs> 
another test subject. Huh. Ah. 